That's why you give the hard jobs to the lazy people. We always find the easiest way to get it done. And my initial plan was to burn it all, starting off with the Christmas trees because those burn hot, and then throw the bush on top. It wasn't until I lit the Christmas tree on fire that I realized that there was a slight southeast wind pushing all of those embers over towards my house, and I didn't really want everything else to catch on fire, so uh, I kind of put it out. So uh, we'll revisit that another day. Today is Super Bowl Sunday, in all honesty, I, haven't, I don't think I've watched a minute of football this year, but, I mean, give me an excuse to drink some beer and eat some good food with my friends, and I'll take it. I was scrolling through Twitter this morning, and I read something about how somebody said programming is easy, and then so many of the comments underneath that said programming is not easy, but everything else you said in that tweet I agree with. And that's a fact. Programming is not easy. A lot of people who think programming is easy, they suffer from the Dunning-Kruger effect. Every single person I've met that has said programming is easy or pretends that programming is easy, they are new programmers who just because they wrote a few lines of code or they got a few things working on their computer, they think that programming is really easy. It isn't until you actually learn more and more about programming to realize how little you actually know about programming. If you're unfamiliar with the Dunning-Kruger effect, it's essentially, how do I want to say this? Let's, uh, let's pull up the actual Dunning-Kruger effect graph. And as you can see here, it's essentially when new people come into a particular discipline, in our case programming, they think they know everything. All this information is new and once they actually figure out how to do a couple things, they think that it's so easy, they think that they are the experts, and it's not until they actually learn more and more about that discipline to really understand how little they actually know. I tweeted about this a long time ago, about how, you know, it's crazy how smart developers understand how little they know and how dumb developers realize or think they know everything. Maybe dumb wasn't the right word. Maybe ignorant would be a proper word because that is exactly what they are. They're ignorant of the whole entire scope of programming that they think they are amazing at it, right? So it's interesting how many people suffer from Dunning-Kruger effect, especially a lot of people on the internet. They like to try to pretend that they know everything and that what everyone else is doing, they try to call out, oh, well, you didn't do this right or you didn't do that right or you still do this that way. And I just, it's, it's incredibly interesting to see how many people suffer from the Dunning-Kruger effect and they just want to try to express how much they know just to hide the fact about how little they know. I, I really, in all honesty, I don't think they're aware about how little they know, but they're also trying to boost themselves by bragging about how much they think they know. That's just a little bit of a uh, food for thought for the day. Good morning. I'm sure some of y'all are happy for that Super Bowl result, but uh, in all honesty, I wanted the Rams to win. When I was younger, I was a St. Louis Rams fan, so although I can't say I'm, I've ever been an L.A. Rams fan, of course I still wanted them to win, but I don't really pay attention to football. 
so I don't really care too much anymore. Plus, it's really cool to see the New England Patriots make history. No, I'm not talking about the most punts in a Super Bowl. I'm not talking about the lowest scoring Super Bowl ever. I'm, I'm just talking about Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Their, uh, their legacy is going to live on. But now, it's off to work. Happy Monday. <laughs> Today, the main problem that I ran into was essentially Port 8080, it was trying to tell me that it was taken up by something, but I checked it, nothing was running on Port 8080, so I just had to finagle around until I figured it out and finally got Port 8080 cleared, even though it was clear, in order to run my actual application to test it. I really need to clean up this office a little bit. It's messy. But if you noticed last week, I didn't have a second video. I had the episode four, but I didn't have that like topic based video and I actually made one. It was going to be titled something along the lines of programming as a hobby versus as a profession. And I just went back to it because I recorded earlier in the week and I just didn't like it. I tried to re-record it, still didn't like it. So I'm just going to try to fit into one or two minutes right now so we can kind of just put this behind us because this is something I want to get off my chest, but I don't think it warrants a whole entire video. So basically, when it comes to programming as a hobby versus a profession, things are different. You're able to work on whatever you want, whenever you want. Maybe you have a little bit of structure, but you are in control. You're the one deciding what new technology or language that you want to learn. While when you're at a profession, you have to abide by whatever they have set out. If they have a particular language that they work with, that's what you use. If they have particular tools that they work with, or technologies rather, that's what you use. Sometimes you're able to choose whatever IDE or text editor you want, sometimes you can't, but you're not able to explore in the same manner that you used to when it was just a hobby. There's another way to look at this, is that when your passion becomes a job. A lot of people with photography, with coding, any walk of life, you have your passion and you do that as a hobby. And then when you do that as your profession, it turns into a job. Instead of it, you still being passionate to do this thing, you're just doing it to make some money. You're just doing it because you need to do it in order to afford the life that you are now living. You are relying on that instead of doing it just for fun. I know there are a lot of y'all that are just starting out programming. You're really excited. This is your passion. I, w I just want you to go in with a particular mindset that there are some people that although something they do for fun is their passion, doesn't always mean it's fun as a job. Some people, it's the best job that they could ever have and maybe you're that person. It's just something to think about. Ugh, I'm really trying to bite my tongue. I just need to let y'all know a little bit <laughs> because over the past two or three weeks, I've been working on something, working towards something that I'm finally trying to put piece everything together because I've been talking to many different entities. I'm starting a new business. So I'm starting a new business. I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet. If the uh, timeline holds true, then about two to three months is when this will launch. This business will launch with preparation over the next two or three months. And y'all will see some of that progress. Some of those sneak peeks, if you will, will be rather, uh, rather obvious as to what this business is. I would love to know if y'all have any guesses of what this business is, but even if you do get it right, I'm not going to tell you. Like I said, there are going to be a few obvious sneak peeks in this series over the next two or so months. So stay tuned if you want to find out what it is without me actually coming out and telling you. Just know that this is something I'm really excited about. I have actually been thinking about this for the past six to eight months. In the past two to three months, I've been doing a lot of research into this, trying to figure out the best way to go about it. And then I finally figured out the best way to go about it uh, about three weeks ago. And that's why I've been talking to a bunch of different people, trying to figure this out and get this underway, ready for launch sometime in April, maybe. April or May. I don't know just yet, but that Seems like that's when it's going to be, but I'm being redundant at this point. That's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. No real particular topic. The YouTube counter is coming along. I'm going to consolidate the final aspect of the YouTube counter in a future video. I'm excited for what the future holds. Until next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace.